the mistake of wrong data. And obviously, we are database professionals, and let's shrink that term down to database. Our jobs, our fundamental jobs typically are to make sure our base of data is backed up, recoverable, has integrity, and is correct. That's probably the most important thing. So the wrong data is probably the worst mistake we can make. Triggers are a common cause of that wrong data. Why are triggers a possible cause of wrong data? It's the most common reason I see for people corrupting their database when they implement database functionality in triggers. And let me give you a true story on this one. I worked with a customer because they asked me in to say they actually suspect that there might be a bug in the Oracle database. We've written an application, we've tested it, it works fine, all our developers can't fault it. When we go live, we have dramas, we have data corruptions, we think something is going wrong in the Oracle database. Don't get me wrong, I'm not claiming that the Oracle database in all versions is always perfect. We occasionally get wrong results, etc. So I'm always, I always go into customers with an open mind when people say this. I've simplified their data model to this very simple example. They have manufacturers and manufacturers make products. So the manufacturer is a logical you know, parent to a list of products. That's the data model. That's the only elements of the data model we're going to focus on in this particular example. As you'd imagine, the logical thing to do here when you have a parent and a child is you add a primary key to the parent table and you add a foreign key to the child table, which points back to the parent. It's funny how some of the more modern databases still to this day are, are talking about, oh yes, we hope to have foreign keys and referential integrity in an upcoming release. Some of these you know, new modern distributed databases, etc. cetera. Uh, it's amazing that, you know, I don't know how I could survive in a database without reference integrity. It's, it saves your bacon so often. But I digress. They didn't do this. To explain why they didn't do this, they weren't, they weren't unfamiliar. They were actually fully cognizant of the fact that Oracle Database had a nice, robust foreign key implementation. They had originally had foreign keys and primary keys, but they'd had to make some adjustments as their application had evolved. If we looked at their table structure, initially they started off with a manufacturer table. As I said, it had a manufacturing ID. That was their primary key. And their product table, which is the child table, had a foreign key, manufacturer ID as well, linking back to the primary. That's how they implement it, just like we normally would as data professionals. We have reference integrity, foreign key back to primary key. Their application requirements had changed over time. Whereas a manufacturer used to be just an instance of a manufacturer, they needed to deploy an application enhancement which included some temporal validity i.e. a manufacturer had versions. So they actually had to change their data model to say a manufacturer actually has a version. What do I mean by a version? It might be, let's say my manufacturer name is, you know, John's Car Tires. That might be my details and I might have my address and I have my details and what my credit score is and all sorts of things like that. When that changes, people who build this application needed to keep a previous instance of those details for historical reasons, such that that could link to historical products. When this product was built, this is what John's details were, this is what his address was, this is what his credit limit was. But now as a manufacturer, I've evolved to do something else. I might make other products, I might offer other services. So they introduced a manufacturer version. So the same manufacturer could occur multiple times in the manufacturer table, being a representation of temporal validity, uh, a version of a, including a start and end time of a manufacturer's details. For some tables in the application, they needed to now refer back to that pair as the primary key. They want to record some details based on the particular instance of this manufacturer row. Whereas lots of other tables, including in this case the product table, only need to refer to the actual existence of a manufacturer. We don't care what particular version it is, it's actually just the manufacturer ID. You're probably aware already that we probably should have implemented manufacturer as two tables, a base manufacturer and a manufacturer instance to capture the temporal validity. But of course, that's more work, time, money, budget, effort, blah, blah, blah. We all live under real world constraints. So they altered the primary key of the manufacturer, but they didn't want to alter the product definition. That means you can no longer use Oracle standard primary keys because we now have a discrepancy between the foreign key linking back to the primary. No problems, they said. If we can't use Oracle's reference integrity, we'll just build our own. And the best place, obviously, to put that would be in a trigger because then it captures 
the, es the essence of RI checking right down in the core of the database. And so they wrote this code. Here's the first bit. Every time you insert or update a product, which is a child row, you can see that the first thing it does is do a select manufacturer ID from the manufacturer table. And that's what reference integrity is, isn't it? Every time you change the child, check the parent. Make sure you're doing something with a valid parent and otherwise spit out an error. Obviously, we need to do the opposite, which is every time you want to delete a manufacturer, well, there better not be any child records for that parent. They could have implemented this with delete cascade, but ultimately, you know, that's typically not what you want to do. Typically, the, the most safe option is you try to delete a parent, you better make sure your job is to delete the children first. So you can see what they did there in this trigger. Every time they delete a manufacturer, we go check, are there any products for that manufacturer? If there are, then blow up and say you're not allowed to do a delete. Testing of those two triggers works a treat. Let's actually run some tests. You can see, I said, insert into product, valid manufacturer of 100. That worked fine. Insert into product, invalid manufacturer of 101, and I get the error. So I've ticked off the foreign key in one direction test. I try to delete a manufacturer where a manufacturer actually has some products. I get the error I'm expecting. The manufacturer is in use. When you build things in triggers to do referential integrity, testing generally works. And then one month later, which is the point at which they called me, their application was crashing all over the place. And to prove, they said, I'm going to prove here's an Oracle bug. We've got these triggers in place. And yet when we do this query, which is show me all the manufacturers in the product table, which cannot be linked back to a parent, there were 86 of them. And they're saying, this is surely impossible because our triggers are forcing this not to be the case. Our triggers are guaranteeing that you can't get into this situation where you have orphan products that don't belong to a, manuf a valid manufacturer. The fundamental here is generally, unless you are super careful, do-it-yourself data integrity is pretty much equivalent to no integrity. And I know that's a fairly sweeping statement, but it's so true because the kind of code you do, it seems easy. Those two triggers was trivial code and it seems to cover all the use cases. But it doesn't because all you have to do is turn this into a real world application timeline. If time goes from left to right, as you can see on the screen, I might create a product with manufacturer equals seven. Manufacturer equals seven is a valid manufacturer ID. And so I'm allowed to create that product. Further on the timeline, some other person comes along in a different session and says, I'd like to delete manufacturer seven the trigger fires as it's meant to and says, is there a product with manufacturer seven? And there isn't one yet because the session underneath the timeline is yet to commit. So that delete will be allowed to occur. Bottom session under the timeline commits, top session commits and hey presto, we have a data corruption. There is the first of our 86 orphan manufacturer records or orphan product records. It's so hard to do data integrity in a multi-session, multi-user system triggers don't cut the mustard unless you are responsible for all the locking etc data integrity seems a trivial thing before i do this to the parent check the child before i do this to the child check the parent it seems trivial it's actually really really complex to do it requires all sorts of specialized locking and even some cheats inside the kernel to implement it well doing it in triggers is a recipe for disaster hence the mistake of the wrong data if you're a pure DBA watching this video, you're going, not my problem. That's a developer issue. They're, you know, they're meant to look after that. Developers are meant to write code that doesn't cause data corruption. But it sneaks in everywhere. And it's so funny how like the kind of things that we often write as DBAs can often get ourselves in similar trouble. And I'm not talking about coding triggers here. You can get into trouble here with no triggers at all. Let me present to you an example of a trivial requirement. I need to copy my employee table from my OLTP system every night, every hour, etc., every minute, depending on how real time I want to be, to my data warehouse. And it might not be a, a proper data warehouse, it might just be a staging area, but I simply want to copy a table from my employee table to somewhere else. Now, I could do it with Golden Gate, I could do it with Streams, or change data capture, but all those things might involve complexity, might involve money, and so often we think, ah, how hard can it be? I'll do it myself. And let's see the kind of things that can go wrong when we do this. I need to copy all rows from my employee table 
to a clone of that table called the employee table on my data warehouse. And I wanna do it every hour, every minute, etc. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create my employee table. You can see there, I've got create one. It's a copy of some data from uh, all objects. There's just a thousand rows in my fake employee table. Even though it's only a thousand rows, if I'm gonna be doing a transfer every minute or every 10 seconds, or whatever, I don't wanna copy all the rows over every time. I don't wanna be comparing all the rows. I just wanna pick up the changes. So what I'll do is I'll add a column. You can see I've done alter table, add, modify, row creation, default sysdate. So every time I put a new row in there, and I'm gonna make this very, very simple. I'm not even gonna worry about updates yet, so there's no triggers. Every time I put a new row in there, we're gonna add this row creation value, which tells me that I've added a new row so I can pick it up. If I'm gonna pick up just the changes since the last time I ran this routine using the row creation table, I need some sort of control table, and that's what this one is here. I've got a control table here. When's the last time I ran my job to copy all the data over? and it'll be sysdate from Dualwits right now. Let's go to another session and continue building our demo. I'm now on my data warehouse. So to start off with, let's create our emp warehouse table as being a copy of employee. That gets the two tables in sync. Let's assume this is an application outage. So we have the two tables are now in sync. And here's my routine to actually copy the rows over. Copy new rows, insert into the employee warehouse table, everything from the employee table where someone has inserted a row more recently than the last time I ran my job. Now that I've done that insert, update the control to say, yep, I'm done. Effectively, I'm up to this point in time and commit. So we grab all the rows in the last five minutes and then we simply move our timestamp along and we continue on. Let's make sure now that actually all our stuff is actually in sync. So I can do this query, which is, all the warehouse rows minus the employee rows, and all the employee rows minus the warehouse rows. So I'm looking both directions and make sure there's absolutely nothing out of whack. They're perfectly in sync. I insert a new row into my employee table, and it's me. It's a value of new employee called Connor. Here's our job on the data warehouse. It says it's time for our schedule update every 10 seconds. Copy all the new rows. Everything's perfectly in sync, looks fantastic. Everything looks fine. Let's go back to session one. I run a commit, and it's that same timeline issue. Even though no triggers here, simple routine. And you can see when I do my con comparison now, I'm now out of sync. I've got one row here, employee number one, me, and he didn't get copied over. Now you think, oh, that's not a problem, you think. I'll copy it over next time, the next time I run. But look at what we've done as, as a result here. The row creation time was here, 21, 47, 51. Our last run is 2147.59. The next time we run this, we're going to pick up all the rows from 2147.59 onwards. This person here won't be picked up. This row will be missed. He's dropped out of that sliding window of time. And unless I've got some complexity here, I'm, he'll always be missed. Now, if I then go back and say, well, let's go back and look for previous ones, well, then I've now got huge amounts of complexity because I'm now I'm back to looking at the entire table. It's actually a non-trivial task to simply copy rows from one table to another and try to keep those two things in sync. So that's an example of it. it sneaks in everywhere that in the most trivial things of all, all I need to do is copy some data. If you're not cognizant of Oracle's read consistency model, whether you're using triggers or not, it's so easy to get the wrong data. Very important that you take care. I suppose all I'm saying is, when it comes to writing code where people are actively using your system and you need that data integrity, you just need to be careful.